What up, Factionistas, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be doing like a mouth face hybrid thing. I thought it was really striking. It's inspired by a guy named, I think it's Marcella. I saw this photo on Instagram. I'll have him linked down below. And if he's not the original artist, please let me know. I would love to credit him or her. Love to spread the love. Getting started, I'm using the Makeup Forever Waterproof XL Aqua Liner, and I'm using a white liner to map out my face. This is going to help me visualize the end result in the makeup and help keep me focused throughout the entire thing. The great thing about using a white or a nude pencil is that it's easily removable so you can change its final shape. Right now, I'm focusing on the perimeter of the overall makeup design, so I'm doing the cupid's bow of the top of the lips and then the entire overall shape. This is the perfect example on why a white pencil is great. I didn't like the final shape of the lips, so I raised it a little bit higher. Once you have the top lip done, I'm going in with this pencil and I'm drawing out each individual tooth. Again, this helps finalize the exact final image and keeps me personally on track. And then just toss on some bottom, <laughs> toss on some final bottom teeth. If you have a beard, don't expect it to look good, but I refuse to shave it. I just won't. Now I'm going in with the NYX pencil. This one is not waterproof and is more easily removable. Now that we have the outer design done, I'm going in with the tongue. And you guys will notice that I do change this final shape up quite a bit. It's never a kill shot in special effects or face paint makeups. Don't be discouraged. It's not going to be perfect on the first try, which just makes white and nude pencils all that more glorious. So I'm just going in and I'm looking at my actual tongue, look at a reference image, look at whatever you'd like, and just really nail down that final shape. This is going to save you time and energy later on. Going off my reference image, I did see that there was a little bit of the inside of the jawline showing through that wide open mouth, so I'm etching those in with that white pencil as well. This helps break up the final look so there's not too much black. I'm using a red and a white face paint, and I mix the two of them together on the surface of the paint, and I tested out a bunch of different pinks. Find the pink you like, and then just apply it to the top lip. With the pink we just applied, I added a little bit of black paint, and I'm using that now to do some pre-shading. With this makeup look being on the entire face, I'm starting from the forehead and working down. So I'm going to complete the top lip before I go any lower, as to avoid messing it up by touching it with the surface of my hand when trying to balance out the brush. So forehead all the way down. I'm going in now with the Makeup Forever Flash Palette, and I'm using a white cream paint. White cream paints blend beautifully on top of water-activated paints, and that's why I love Jordan Hans for teaching me how to do that. It's a life changer. So I'm using this to, one, add a little bit of highlight to the lip, but I'm also toning down the pink. The pink is a little bit too cartoon, stark, bright, vivid pink, so I want to make it more of a natural or maybe a little bit more of a realistic lip color. So not being a lip pink lipstick, I wanted to make it a little bit more... Um, diffused if you would say so i'm going in with that white and i'm just adding in highlights and helping the overall shape bend does that make sense it really does oh and we're dancing okay uh, uh. back to work so i'm using this warm brown eyeshadow you can use whichever one you like i believe this is uh, it's either red earth from anastasia or coco bear from makeup geek can't remember it'll be in the description box but i'm using that i'm shaving the outer side of the lip because naturally there would be shadow on the outside and that most of the light would hit in the center of the lip so you want to mimic that with highlight and shadows so i'm applying it to the baseline bottom of the lip because the top lip would cast shadow onto the teeth and then as well in the outer and inner corner so i'm just kind of shading it to have that bend just kind of look at your actual lip or look at something of a reference image to really see how light interacts with that object and that will help you a lot when it comes to shading moving on now to the gums and i'm using a red and a black face paint both are by mayron and i'm getting a color similar to this i wanted it to be to be a little bit darker than the top lip to add a little bit of contrast and very simply i'm just adding it to that gum area making sure to create a little bit of a triangle in between each teeth which gums naturally make I'm 
I'm now adding a little bit of highlight. I'm using the white from the Makeup Forever Flash Palette, and I'm just adding that to the gums because the gums would naturally have a curve of light with the tooth resting underneath it. With any black eyeshadow, we're going to begin shading the top lip. So the top lip would naturally cast shadow onto the teeth like it does in real life. So we want to add that into this makeup look. So right beneath the base, beneath the base, right beneath the base. Oh my God. Just add a shadow underneath the top lip. Okay. <laughs> Now I'm going back in with that Make It Forever white pencil, and this is a great technique with teeth. Seeing that it is in a solid penciled shape, I can really go in with that pencil and curve it in a nice C shape right into that gum, and you're going to get a perfect straight line every single time. With a brush, the product might not have enough inside the bristles of the brush, or vice versa, whatever. So when you're creating teeth, it's a great idea to kind of just do it with a pencil to give a nice sharp curved line. And then with a little bit of black eyeshadow, I'm just going to be applying that in between each tooth. Very self-explanatory here. You could go ahead and shade the teeth if you'd like. I like the more stark white. I liked it that it was a little bit more cartoon looking as opposed to being realistic. Like I, I can very much see this like as graffiti on a wall. But if you wanted to do more of a realistic tooth, then go ahead and shade it. I'm going in with another pink color, you know, very self-explanatory, and I'm adding that to the bottom of the tongue about halfway. And now I'm going to go in with a darker pink. And with that darker pink, I'm going to apply it to the top of the tongue, blending it down to the bottom of the tongue. And this is going to mimic the natural highlight and shadows that you would normally get on your tongue. Since this is a tongue sticking out of a mouth, it's going to have shadow on the back cascading forward into lighter, if that makes sense. Now with the darker brown eyeshadow, it, it applies a lot darker than it looks in the pan, if that's very interesting. But I'm just using that now to further enhance that shadow. So right at the base of the tongue, blending it down. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. You want to just mimic the natural shadows of the tongue and really make the bottom of tip of the tongue look like it's pointing out further than the back. I'm not going to say the word tongue anymore. I think I've used the word tongue today more than I've used it in my entire life. I'm just using black now to shade around the final tongue because this is a part in the makeup where I was getting a little lost and I'm like, does this look realistic? I can't really tell. So I'm adding a little bit of black eyeshadow around it to kind of visualize the final look to see if it actually looked real or not. So um, if that helps you to maybe do certain steps that kind of bring it along a little further to kind of visualize more, then do that. Ignore what I just did to the top of my nose. I just I meant to just shade. Sh I meant to just shade. Oh, not all the way up there. Anyway, going back in with the Makeup Forever White Cream, and I'm going back in now and highlighting. So you can see how I'm shading this. Is I'm applying very stark, very bold shadows that maybe are potentially a little bit too dark first, and then I'm going in with a white, light pink or white cream paint, and I'm covering the entire tongue with that. And that's going to make the shadow look like it's resting underneath the skin as opposed to being right on the surface of the skin. This is also another way that you can apply it to beauty makeup when it comes to cream contour. Doing cream contour underneath the foundation makes it look more natural and that's essentially what I'm doing here in a more special effects way. Grabbing some more pink paint I'm going to now put it in that little bit of that inner jawline area starting from the very last tooth connecting it to the very last tooth at the top. Ta -da. Now we're doing a little bit of shading. I'm shading the top part and the outer edges of this inner jawline. So I really want the highlight and the focus to be right in the center. So go ahead and shade right where the teeth meets the jawline and the top and bottom, and as well as do the sides where it meets the inner and outer portion, portion, portion of the mouth. We're going to go in with the same techniques we did on the tongue, where I'm going to add stark, very bold shadows first, and then almost completely cover all of it with the cream paint, so the shadows look like they're underneath the skin, not on top, which is what you see here now. Do you see how it gives a little bit more of a natural blend and seamless? And it's toned down, but it's still t like training the eye to really see it as a bend in light. It's a really great uh, shadow technique. And then if you want a little bit more bold, add a little bit more shadow, and then cover it again with the cream. See? 
and do visualize this makeup of the entire part of my face that isn't done is going to be covered in black. So that's why the dark shadows on the edges don't really matter. Speaking of, going with the black face paint, this one's by Mehron, it's water activated, and I'm applying that first to the base of the teeth to get a nice straight line, and then just go in and fill in your entire face. If you have hooded eyes like me, it would be best to use a cream liner or something a little bit stronger on the eyelids to make sure that it doesn't break down right away, which I didn't do, which I then ended up struggling covering it up over and over. So this is another perfect example on why you should totally shave before makeup looks, but I just can't do it. As soon as this tutorial is over, I have to go out into the real world, and if I don't have facial hair, I feel like a naked mole rat. I just can't do it. So it's, your bottom teeth are going to look like poopy if you have a beard, but whatever. Just look at the top. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it if you're cool with it. Now I'm taking a little bit of black face paint, and I'm going to then just connect that black negative space and really blend that into the back of the tongue to really visualize that it's sticking out of that mouth. Continue doing that shading technique on the sides of the tongue as well, and that's going to add a little bit of a bend and make the tongue look more three-dimensional. I promised that I wasn't going to say the T word anymore, and I think I said it like seven more times after that. Whatever. So now we're going to go back in with that other shading technique where I create those harsh, dark shadows, and then I'm covering the entire design again now with a light pink cream paint, and I'm going to help blend that in. And then again, that helps visualize that those shadows are beneath the skin, not on top. This is a great example on why the flash palette, although expensive, is a perfect investment because I saw that the black negative space was a little bit too full and it was really just teeth and tongue. So I'm using a light pink now to apply right on top of that stark black face paint to add a little bit of a shading maybe of like very dark distant gum lines inside the mouth. That's really going to help break it up and make it look a little bit more dimensional and it's going to make the overall makeup look not as flat. So I'm just applying that in, blending it in, and then you can even set it with a powder or go in with a black eyeshadow to kind of help diffuse and blend out those edges. But that's the finished tutorial, my friends. I really hope that you guys liked it and you guys learned something new today. Definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not already for more tutorials like this and follow me on my social media accounts. I love to connect with you on all social media platforms, Alex Faction everywhere. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, friends.